Hello, Wednesday people. Welcome back to Hot News. Hope you're ready to get into the tech news of the day. But first, let's talk about today's video sponsor. Why, yes, I am wearing Bessie's everyday slip-on shoes. I've been wearing them every single day since I've gotten them. They are so lazy because you just, you slip them on, but they're so super comfortable. And Vessi is the world's first waterproof knit shoes that allow you to take them anywhere, whether it be doing the dishes, wearing them in the shower, wearing them while running through puddles, anything like that. They are waterproof so your feet don't get moist. You can keep them all dry and happy like. And they're completely stylish, easy to put on, and the pricing is pretty great with a cool initiative. If you use our link in the video description, vessifootwear.com forward slash UFD, you can get the world's first 100% waterproof knit shoes for only $95. Or alternatively, you can buy them at the full price of $135 and $40 of that will go to the Vessi Community Fund, which helps to give back to a community in need, especially in trying times like this, a community fund that helps to empower everyday heroes is definitely worth it. So you can check out their shoes down below. Waterproof, they feel great, they run great, which I highly appreciate. I use my Cityscape sneakers for that. I very much love my Vessi shoes, and you can love yours too when you use the link in the video description. You could either save $40, pay $95, or you can give back to the community fund and allow Vessi to help support everyday heroes. So again, use the link in the video description. And now on to the hot news. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about NVIDIA because they got some big news for us and maybe not news but news of news that should be coming on down the pipeline and that is they announced when they're going to announce the next gen cards or at least what we think is going to be the next gen cards with them not only starting the ultimate countdown two days ago but they came out and said that there will be an event scheduled for september 1st at 9 a.m pacific time 12 p.m eastern nvidia ceo jensen wong will be presenting all of the stuff that we're expecting to see with regards to Ampere at this GeForce special event on September 1st at 9 a.m. But one of the big things that I kind of want to talk about with regards to this is the idea that we potentially likely won't be seeing the RTX 30 series. We more than likely, according to what I'm prospecting right now, are going to see the RTX 21 series. The reason I'm speculating that, number one, is because of all of the use of the number 21s that they have. 21 days, 21 years, and it's supposed to be the next version. You have the RTX 20, then RTX 21. So it would kind of just follow logistically that the RTX 21 series would be what we're dealing with here and not the RTX 30 series. You combine that with the fact that there's plenty of other reports out there that are stating that NVIDIA is not yet certain about the name. And what we have is the right choosing of an even more confusing naming scheme with everything. Go from the GTX 10 series to the RTX 20 series, back to the GTX 16 series, and then up to the RTX 21 series. 21. Phenomenal stuff. Good job, NVIDIA. You really make me happy with that. But more good news coming out about the RTX 30 series or 21 series, however you want to call that, is that there's reports coming out that custom cards will be available coinciding with the Founders Edition. So this is coming out from Tweaktown, who is saying that their sources are saying that partner models such as the ROG Strix 3080 Ti that you see right here will be available at the same time with the RTX 21 Founders Edition. So you don't have to just deal with NVIDIA's. You can buy your own and you can get something that looks like this as opposed to the weird one that NVIDIA came up with. And while we're expecting NVIDIA to talk about September 1st for the RTX 21 series, we got a confirmation of release date for the Xbox Series X or at least a release month because previously all we knew was that it was coming out holiday 2020, Microsoft announcing that it will be in November. That's all we get, just November. It's gonna be sometime in November, that's all you get from Microsoft, which just coincides with the fact that the majority of their other consoles, besides I think the One S launched in November. So this just kind of plays along with that. But what you won't be getting with the Series X in November is Halo Infinite because 343 Industries came out and said that they will have to postpone it. It is not sustainable for the well-being of our team or the overall success of the game to ship it this holiday. So the Xbox Series X big launch title is now gone, which leads leads me to think and other people that I've seen out on the internet that we might not see the Xbox Series X come out this year. Number one, obviously financial belts are gonna be very tight all across the world, not just in the United States, but there's tons of economic downturn that's happening. So buying a very expensive console might not necessarily be something on everybody's radar, even for the holiday season. Number two, we don't have a release date or a price as of yet, which kind of makes it intriguing as to whether or not we're gonna see these things finally launch. Number three, I don't know if you've taken a look at any electronic store recently, but go ahead and try to find an Xbox One X or One S at any local retail shop, and it is very difficult to do. You might have some in your area, but I've checked 
I think three or four stores in my local Gainesville area and I cannot find a single console available anywhere. I saw some base PS4s at a Walmart and they there was only one left. So it's not like there are plethora out there. So the production because of coronavirus actually appears to be slowed. And then number four, I actually don't know if I've already made this point, but Halo Infinite, no launch titles, nothing to kind of entice the sale of the new console. And especially if it was Halo Infinite that was gonna entice the sale of the new console, that didn't look very great. It was kind of lackluster as far as the next-gen technology that we're expecting to be implemented in the video games. So Series X, possibly gonna get delayed. PS5, possibly gonna get delayed. I know they keep saying they're not gonna get delayed, and this is just conjecture on my part, but they also don't have a ton of reason to launch by the end of this year. What's, what's, what's the rush? Why not wait till Q1? The Nintendo Switch launched in March and it's destroying the Xbox One. So you can go ahead and launch it whenever. It's actually probably not gonna matter too much to the end consumers. Let me know what you think about that down below. But in case you wanna try some cloud gaming, Microsoft has launched the xCloud beta. You can try it out if you're a Game Pass Ultimate subscriber over on Android. The official launch is happening on September 15th. They're giving a beta window now to help ease the transition for when it's supposed to officially launch. And speaking of official, let's go ahead and talk about how SoftBank is now officially saying that they are interested in selling ARM. This has actually just been rumor at this point that NVIDIA was looking to buy ARM. A bunch of other companies were looking to buy ARM. SoftBank never said that they were selling. Well, now they've come out and said that they are looking to sell. However, they also have the possibility on the table that ARM could just go public themselves and deal with all of that, the shareholders, and not necessarily need to be sold off to another company and instead ARM just kind of sells it out to the public. So that would be the general idea. NVIDIA buying ARM probably would be bad in the long run for all of the things that ARM does for the general ecosystem. It would likely piss off Apple who doesn't want NVIDIA to do anything with their computers ever again. So we'll have to see how this plays out. Speaking of playing out, Twitch, hey, that's a good segue. Amazon is announcing that Twitch Prime is being renamed to Prime Gaming so that when you follow us over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple, I've been playing a little bit of video games over there as well as just doing some stream while I'm stuck at home. When you subscribe with the free Twitch Prime sub, it now just says subscribe with Prime. It is not, nothing's changing, just the name. So cool stuff from Amazon. Speaking of game changes, EA is announcing that Access EA Access is coming soon to Steam. You'll be able to play all of your EA Access games over on Steam, which is great. What's not great is that EA put out raises for their executives to their shareholders and their shareholders said no. We're not going to give you raises this year, which is actually quite unusual. According to Harvard Business School study, less than 3% of votes by shareholders to raise pay for executives have ever failed. So this is in the vast minority of cases where this is happening. And it was going to potentially give the CEO a bump of $3 million, the CFO a bump of $10 million, and the chief studios officer bump of $9 million, and the CTO a bump of around $6 million. So, so it looks like that's not happening. Hopefully they learn that you can't just cut your workforce, say that things aren't going well, and then just decide, hey, I, I'm worth tens of millions of dollars more than I was last year, even though our company is failing. Wish I could do that. $10 million for a failing company? Hell yeah. UFDstore.com. Let's go ahead and talk about another company that apparently is in dire financial straits, and that's Mozilla, who has announced that they are laying off 25% of their workforce or around 250 jobs, with the chief executive officer saying that the global pandemic has significantly impaired their ability to generate revenue, so they fear they're going to have to lay off people, which is sad. So let's change tones and talk quickly about a new feature that Twitter is rolling out to everybody. This was available to select people on Twitter, which was the reply limit feature, which just made it so that when you sent out a tweet, you could choose who could reply to it. So you can see here, you have everyone, people you follow or only people you mention. So if you don't mention anybody and you set that, then technically nobody can respond to your tweet. Get ready for people pulling goofs and gags with this on Twitter. Hey, if you love X, go ahead and reply to my tweet. And then nobody replies because they limited it to people who only are added so whatever so get ready for all that zaniness happening on twitter in the next few days and then burning out because nobody actually wants to do it speaking of nobody actually wanting to do it nobody actually i think We'll have to see if this actually pans out. But Thermaltake is apparently giving out a new way to apply thermal paste, which is in a honeycomb pattern. They're giving you like a plastic overlay that you spread the thermal paste out and then it leaves this honeycomb pattern on 
your CPU and it's supposed to help with evening out the spread and it should reduce temperatures. And it's not like terribly expensive. It costs nine or $12, depending on the version of the thermal paste you buy based on its thermal conductivity. But I don't think we really need to invent the wheel here. The CPU cooler applies pressure. If you put a dot in the middle, it spreads it out evenly. You're not gonna get much more out of this, is my guess. But you know, you could look cool. Or as the pun at the beginning of this article says, unbelievable. I really want things to end there. Speaking of bees, bees live on the earth and sometimes the earth quakes. And now Android is the world's largest earthquake detection system. Google announcing that they are gonna be activating phones and their accelerometers to become an early warning system for earthquakes and just allowing Android devices to be one cloud enabled seismometer so that people can know whether or not there's an earthquake in their area and know before it hits them because they're going at the speed of light, which is faster than the speed of earth. Apparently, I actually don't know how fast Earth moves. I can tell you that I hit the Earth quite fast in the game Fall Guys. I actually have been playing this over on our Twitch streams, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. Maybe toss me a prime sub. I don't know, something like that. Anyways, Fall Guys is getting its first new level added to the game, which has had more than 2 million people play it on Steam. It is a huge hit over on PlayStation because it's part of the PS Plus freebie. It has just actually been a really fun game. I'm actually going to pick it up for my sons and we're going to play that together. So they, they have me hooked in this and a good segue about hitting the earth because you fall a lot because it's fall, guys. UFDstore.com. Speaking of non-paid sponsor segments, let's go ahead and talk about today's video sponsor one more time. Again, big thanks to Vessi for partnering with us for today's video. Go check out your own 100% waterproof knit shoes at vessifootwear.com forward slash UFD and potentially give back to the community, but definitely get yourself a great pair of shoes. I love them. And just in case anybody's curious, Linus does not pay me to talk about his water bottle. It's just actually really good. 40 ounce water bottle. Heck yeah. Keeps things cool, keeps my water all delicious like. It's great. So that's what else is great? You. So you've watched all of this episode of Hot News. You know that this is the time where we have to say goodbye, where our feelings get welled up inside of us. And we reluctantly agree to go our parting ways, knowing that we'll always hold a piece of each other in our hearts. And potentially one day, maybe when we're older and less reckless with ourselves, we can kind of reconnect and really know that what we had was special. And maybe that flame reignite once again. Probably tomorrow on Thursday. See you for tomorrow's episode of Hot News. Bye, friends. What's 9 plus 10? 21.